These days we associate the name Pringle with the tasty salty snack that comes in this distinctive tube, but Pringle is one of the oldest names in the Scottish border region. And this tower behind me, Buckholm, was built by the family in 1582. These were turbulent times on the borders and the riding families built strong houses and peel towers to defend themselves. It's a ruin now, but Buckholm Tower is said to be haunted by the ghost of a former laird named James Pringle. James Pringle lived here on the outskirts of Galashiels in the latter part of the 17th century. The days of reaving had ended a long time ago, but this was still far from a peaceful area. James's story is a dark and twisted one, you see. He was a violent and hate-filled man, and nobody bore the brunt of his temper more than his wife and young son. He torment them and beat them, and that was to say nothing of the verbal abuse that they suffered. One night, after getting drunk and subjecting his family to a particularly nasty night of violence, his wife and son packed as much as they could carry and left, never to return again. When he'd sobered up in the morning, James found himself totally alone in this cold, dark tower. You might think that this kind of experience would be enough to sober you up and make you permanently come to your senses, but the opposite was true with James Pringle. He became more cold, more hate-filled, and more violent towards women in the local area. Additionally, Pringle was a supporter of the king and despised Covenanters, a movement of Presbyterians that was seen by the state as religious rebels. One of his favorite pastimes, aside from brutalizing women, was hunting these people down with his hounds. Now one day, Pringle was called upon by the captain of some local dragoons. Their goal was to break up an illegal assembly of covenanters on the nearby Ladhope Moor. Naturally, Pringle was only too pleased to assist with this job, being somewhat of an expert on these people and the local area. He led a troop of dragoons to where the religious rebels were most likely to be. His guess was correct, however, the Covenanters had some prior warning of the raid, and so they dispersed so as to avoid capture. That is, all with the exception of two men. Geordie Elliot, one of the rebels, had earlier that day fallen from his horse and was badly hurt. His son William, who had been in attendance at the gathering, stayed behind with his injured father, unable to leave his side. If caught, they could hardly plead innocence, as they were both well-known Covenanters. When the Dragoons reached the meeting place, James drew his sword and prepared to dispatch the two rebels. But the captain urged caution, thinking that they might be able to provide valuable information about the Covenanter movement and those involved with it. It was arranged that Pringle would take the injured man and his son back home to Buckholm Tower and hold them as prisoners for the night until Captain Bruce could collect them in the morning with an escort. This arrangement suited Pringle just fine and he could barely hide the excitement on his face. When everyone arrived back at Buckholm, Pringle had the two Covenanters thrown into the dungeon, and seeing that the rebels were delivered safely, the captain and the dragoons left. Opening a new bottle of brandy and sitting down to his evening meal, Pringle grew slowly more and more drunk, and thus more ill-tempered. He could hear a great deal of noise coming from the lower floors of his tower, and decided to put a stop to this nonsense that was disturbing his supper. Heading down to the entrance to the dungeon, he encountered a number of his servants who had been alerted by the screams and shouts from down below. Old Geordie Elliot was in a huge deal of pain. His leg was likely broken as a result of his fall, and his son Will was desperately pleading for help. Pringle pushed straight past the small crowd of servants, going down into the dungeon and closing the door behind him. The anxious crowd heard the sounds of heavy blows, screams of pain, and then... Silence. Shortly followed by dragon noises and strained movements. Then the drunk James Pringle emerged from the dungeon and closed the door once more. 
again pushing through the servants and returning to his drink upstairs. But as he was about to return to his private quarters, there was a loud knock on the entrance door to the tower. A servant cautiously opened the door, and there stood Isabel Elliot, the wife of Geordie. She'd come looking for her husband and son, and as a former servant at Buckholm Tower, she was well acquainted with the foul-tempered James Pringle. That, however, did not deter her from coming to the aid of her family. Pringle smiled in that sadistic way that he often did, and grabbed the old woman, pulling her inside the tower and taking her down into the dungeon. Once more, the servants waited cautiously at the entrance to the dungeon, and heard the blood-curdling scream arise from this dark pit. Isabel had been shown her husband and son hanging from hooks. Their bodies resembled carcasses in a butcher's shop more than they did human beings. Isabel made her way out of the dungeon, tormented by the sound of Pringle laughing and taunting her. She ran to the doorway of the tower and fell on the ground outside, wailing and crying uncontrollably. Out came James Pringle and looked down on her. Away with thee, you old witch, he remarked. The woman slowly dragged herself to her feet, and suddenly the crying stopped. Her eyes were glazed, but there burned a deep hatred in them. She pointed to the drunken laird and cursed him, damning his soul for not just this wicked deed, but for his entire life of hatred, torture and murder. In that moment, it seemed like Pringle sobered up. His smile faded and his face became deadly serious. Isabel vanished into the darkness, leaving James standing there, alone and in shock. From that moment on, he was convinced that he was a haunted man. He truly believed that he was haunted by packs of ghostly hounds that could and would attack him at any time. Night after night, servants burst into his room after hearing screams and even the odd gunshot as James desperately fought off these phantom dogs that only he could see. He was out on his horse one day, only to arrive back at Buckham Tower, exhausted and terrified, having been pursued by the hounds once again. Within a year, Pringle had died. It was said his death was not a pretty one, and he parted this life in torment and agony. Even up until the point of his death, he still saw the hounds. It seemed like they were tearing him apart as he died. As the first anniversary of the Laird's death approached, some of the servants saw something quite disturbing. They watched as a ghostly figure was seen, running for his life, making towards the tower, desperately hoping to reach the entrance. Behind him was a pack of spectral hounds, baying and howling as they closed in on their kill. The following night, all occupants of the tower heard baying sounds again coming from outside, as well as a voice calling out for help. Please, somebody, anybody, open the door, for the love of God, they're coming after me. You must let me in. Open the door, please, open the door. The voice sounded just like the voice of James Pringle. Perhaps unwisely, one of the servants opened the door. But all of the noise faded away, and the courtyard was completely silent. The next night, exactly one year since Pringle passed away, the sounds were heard once again. The baying, the screaming, the banging, but this time they were coming from inside the tower, from inside the dungeon. Nobody dared open the door this time. And since that night, on the anniversary of the death of James Pringle, every June, these same sounds are said to be heard in this area, mainly from the tower and mainly from the dungeon. There are those that say that this is just a story, a tale to frighten the children, but inside the dungeon of this old crumbling tower, if you look up to the ceiling you can still see an old iron hook. Could this be the same hook that one of the Covenanters were hanged from all those centuries ago? In the 18th century, the Reverend Henry Davison was reported to have performed an exorcism to cast out the deal of Buckholm, and 
put an end to his nightly wanderings. Yet it seems that he was unsuccessful, because to this day, James has still not found rest. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see similar content, then do take a look at some of my other videos. From a terrifying nun that haunts a friary in Antrim, to the pink lady that stalks the corridors of Northumberland's most picturesque castle. Please do give this video a share and help me grow my channel and reach new audiences. And if you'd like to support my work, you can do so via Patreon and PayPal, which is a massive help. Until next time, and I hope you all have a happy Halloween.